after a gorgeous day, it's senior night in the Show Me State as the Missouri Tigers host the Arkansas Razorbacks. With Chris Batola, I'm Taylor Zarser here in Como today. As you see, the starting lineups right now for the Missouri Tigers. Bracketology, Joe Lenardi says the Razorbacks are a seven. Mizzou right now would be a nine. And Chris, both of these teams have gotten themselves to tournament consideration with great outside shooting. Yeah, you're looking at two of the better backcourts in this league with Arkansas. It starts with Jalen Barford and Daryl Macon, the two best three-point shooters in the SEC by percentage 44 percent on the year for both of them 18 a game for Barford 17 for Macon these guys are electrifying scorers on the other side it is one of the best individual seasons in the SEC by Cassius Robertson a guy who transferred in from Canisius a graduate transfer didn't really know what they were going to get has been a huge surprise having an all sec season can really light it up from the perimeter he's shooting 43 percent from three so taylor i expect both these teams to really let it go from the outside yeah they always do and chris is a big deal for arkansas today win this game you get a double buy into friday in st louis next week and i you know i think they're in right now I, you know this game at home is a big game i, I think they've got to get to 20 to feel comfortable that 9 10 line as we know could get a little bit dicey razorbacks wearing the alternate black uniforms on the road today in a sold out house that norm built and immediately the razorbacks turn it over yeah, missouri has won games this year with their defense and they were outstanding Tuesday night in the second half against Vanderbilt defensively. Strictly man-to-man -man from Mizzou on that defensive end. And the same thing for Arkansas. They're going to play predominantly man-to-man. -man. It's Jeremiah Tillman with an offensive foul. Turnovers have been a big problem for the Tigers all season, committing over 14 a game. They committed nine in that game you called, Chris on Tuesday night in the first half, but we're much better with the ball in the second half. We don't have a true point guard that plays on this team. This is Macon. Down to Dustin Thomas with about a 12-footer. It's no good, and the Canadian Cassius Robertson clears it. Sang the Canadian National Anthem for him today before the game to honor the senior who played at Canisius before transferring here. Fade away, no good. And the Razorbacks, the Razorbacks grab the board. This is Gafford, a phenomenal game against Auburn. Tuesday night and over 20 points in the game and gets called for an offensive foul. Oh, a nice job there by Tillman. I mean, that was just great post defense. He, he made a brick wall. Wouldn't allow Gafford to get into his body and shoot over the top. Just really well defended. And a guy in Tillman who has really struggled with foul trouble all year. That's going to be a great matchup to watch in this game. Two freshmen, outstanding freshmen big guys. Wide open three off the mark. Rebounded by Barford. While it's senior night here at Missouri. Arkansas has seven seniors for themselves. This is one of them, making all the way to the rim. He's a tough matchup, man. Believes he, he should score, knows he can score, and really goes to work. A high volume, efficient scorer. You do not see Michael Porter Jr. on the court. There was some talk that he might play today. In fact, Conzo Martin said if he feels good enough, he can. Martin Porter did release a statement earlier today saying that he would not play, that hopefully he would be ready for St. Louis. There's his coach, Conzo Martin, in his first season, three years in each of those schools on the bottom line there, Cal, Tennessee, and Missouri State. Well, was a great player in his own right at Purdue, uh, a great player on a great team in period during for Purdue basketball, and has done a great job at every stop along the way as a head coach. A chance for a 20th win today. Geist checks into the lineup, as does Nico, and his shot from close range is no good and rebounded by Beard. Reed Nico 
already in the game, as is Jordan Geist, and Beard launches. Both these teams, two of the higher volume three-point shooting teams in this league. In the case of Missouri, 50% of their field, goal, field goals in the last four games have come from that three-point line. Tigers have missed their first four shots. Barnett for three. Tigers ice cold to start the game. Razorbacks 10 and 7, tied for third at the moment, would be the four seed if they win this game today. And if they don't, they're playing Thursday in the word nicely done. round of 16, if you will. Jonte Porter, after a great game Tuesday night, scores his first bucket off the bench. Beard into Gafford. Daniel Gafford, phenomenal against Auburn. 21 points, 10 rebounds, 7 blocks. Came off the bench as Trey Thompson got the start on Tuesday night. 7 dunks, 7 blocks in that game for the freshman. The little brother of Michael Porter Jr. Jonte Porter with the ball right now, double team. How about Porter's performance on Tuesday night? Both these teams really looking to get the ball inside. I mean, we've seen the last three possessions. Arkansas, a steady diet of Gafford on the block. Same thing with Porter in. A guy who's not only a scorer down there, but can really pass the basketball. Such a good feel. Here's another post feed. And it works out as Jeremiah Tillman with the finish. Quickly up the court. Come the Razorbacks. Gafford. Nice finish. It's actually well defended. Tillman comes up, plays it well off the pick and roll. And a nice little touch floater over the top by Gafford, a guy whose game has gone to another level in the last two weeks. In the corner to Robertson. Robertson. You can't leave him. I mean, you just cannot leave that guy. You have got to stay locked in. Because he's got one thing on his mind, and that's shooting a three. Nobody better in conference shooting him this season. Thomas draws the foul. Fourteen fifty-seven to go in the first half with the Razorbacks with a 9-7 lead after that Robertson three just a moment ago as you take a look at Mike Anderson in his seventh season now 58 years old is of course a Nolan Richardson disciple made the tournament twice Conzo Martin in his first season in Como after three years at Cal Tennessee at Missouri State Fourteen fifty-seven left as we said first half of uh, Martin has a tremendous team and some great prospects coming in next season. And we welcome you to Saturday's showcase presented by Five Hour Energy from Mizzou Arena after a gorgeous day. It's senior night in the Show Me State as the Missouri Tigers host the Arkansas Razorbacks. 9-7 Arkansas ahead of Missouri. With Chris Patola, I'm Taylor Zarzer. And Chris, we do not have Michael Porter Jr. playing in this game today. He released a statement earlier today saying that he'll try to play in St. Louis next week. Yeah, you know, look, it's it's anybody's guess. I mean, he is. He once again went through their shoot-around. I saw him in shoot-around on Tuesday. Uh, he's moving well. He's making shots. He's participating. Uh, but they don't feel like he has enough practice time under his belt. 
And, uh, and so, you know, it's anybody's guess whether or not he will end up playing. Obviously, a guy who's going to make a lot of money uh, at the next level, uh, assuming he comes out. As for the players that are in the game today, let's take a look at their resumes with Missouri and with Arkansas. So far this season, both are NCAA tournament teams. According to Joe Lenardi, the Razorbacks as a seven seed and Missouri a nine if the season ended today. Chris, you think Missouri needs one more win, whether it's today or next week yeah, in St. I mean, Louis? To feel comfortable. Obviously, they're in right now, but when you're talking nine, ten line, it gets a little bit dicey. Uh, you you want to hold home court today. This would be a, a terrific win against another tournament team. And then you'd like to see a win uh, or two in that in that SEC tournament. But, but right now, they're fine. And Considering having lost Porter to start the year, they've gotten a great season out of Cassius Robertson. Some of those younger big guys, I think, have been the difference between an oh, eight-win team last year and what they have done this season. Robertson already with a three in this game leads the conference in SEC games, shooting over 43%. As Dustin Thomas for Arkansas misses the first free throw. You know, it's worth mentioning, too, on the other side, you've got the two best three-point shooters in the SEC, in Daryl Macon and Jalen Barford, two electrifying scorers, guys who are wired to score. And a big thing about this game today, Taylor, is tempo. You know, we see here Arkansas going to pick up a little bit. In that first matchup they had earlier this season where Arkansas won by two, Mike Anderson felt like Mizzou at, at one point in that game really had a, an opportunity to slow the game down. Arkansas plays the fastest tempo in the league. They want it at that pace. Before winning the game, Arkansas blew an 18-point lead in that game, which you're referring to. Missouri actually led by six with just over four to go in Fayetteville before the Hogs came storming back. Just six on the shot clock. Extra pass, Porter, Jonte Porter can't handle it. Turned over again by the Tigers, who have committed over 14 per game this season. Beard from deep. I mean, that's the shot you want. This Missouri defense has been so good all year. It was outstanding in the second half on Tuesday night against Vanderbilt. In the paint to Tillman. Can't finish. What a move, though. Everything but the finish. What a big body Jeremiah Tillman is. Arkansas with the alternate black uniforms today. Three from the corner is good by C.J. Jones, and he's fouled. C.J. Jones, the sophomore, has not shot it well on the season, but that's what he has a reputation as, is a shooter. And you can tell scouting report things early in the game. The, the scouting report is close out hard on C.J. Jones. He wants to shoot threes. That's what he does. And Cassius Robertson just a, a little bit too aggressive on the closeout. It's an 81% free throw shooter this season trying to complete the four-point play. And the Hogs are up an early touchdown. And those are killers. Again, a guy, C.J. Jones, only shooting at 28% from three in conference. So you want to close out, but if a high hand would be fine, you, you don't have to go out that hard to the point where you commit a foul. Missouri does not have a deep bench. They will, they will play as many as nine guys, but only have about seven in their rotation without Michael Porter Jr., of course, only played two minutes in that first game before that significant injury. His little brother, Jonte, who had a great game against Bandy on Tuesday night. This is when Barnett grabs the board and gets fouled. Arkansas has not been a good rebounding team on the season. And one of the things is their guards have to get in there and rebound. Their big guys have, have really struggled consistently defensive rebounding. Those guards have to be active. Jordan Geist playing over 20 minutes a game, coming off the bench all season open. Instead to Barnett for three. Another 
guy who is a catch and shoot player. That's what he wants to do. He spots up, plays off guys, and here he is on senior day knocking one down. From St. Louis, will get to play in the SEC tournament next week in his hometown. Barford way too strong. Possession arrow favoring Missouri. You know, you're going to see some quick shots from Arkansas. You know, as I said, they play at the fastest tempo in the SEC, about 15 seconds of possession. And now they're going to pick up. They want Missouri to play at that tempo. Tigers only won eight games last year, 27 and three seasons as Kim Anderson was the head coach of a chance for a 20th on the year today. For those of you watching on ESPN News, our game coverage will continue on ESPN2 in just a few moments. You see Mike Anderson looking for his 150th win in seven seasons in Fayetteville. Has never had a losing season as a head coach. Nico, way too short. Darius Hall, the freshman, out to the senior, Trey Thompson. Both teams, both teams trying to find their groove in the early going. For those of you watching on ESPN News, our game co coverage continues on ESPN2 in just a moment. We only got one shot at this. Then let's make it count. Today, right now, you have more power at your fingertips than entire generations that came before you. But it's not really about what technology can do, it's about what you can do with it. We are living in the future we always dreamed of. We have mixed reality that changes how we see the world and AI empowering us to change the world we see. So what will you do with it? ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by 5-Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%. And in part by Ford. Going further so you can. And the Capital One Venture Car. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? Senior night in Como, Cassius Robertson, Jordan Barnett, Brett Rowell, all honored before the game with their families today. What's interesting, Chris, is none of those guys are four-year players. Each transferred in from other programs. In fact, Conso Martin has no four-year players in his program. He has a couple of juniors that have been here for three years. Yeah, it's it's an odd mix. Uh, and, and even on the other side, it, with Arkansas, one of the oldest teams in the country, they don't have traditional seniors. You know, they have junior college players. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I mean, you know the landscape, Taylor. Teams are, are plugging holes and finding ways to put teams together in a lot of unique ways. And both these programs have done that over the last few years. Especially with Cassius Robertson transferring in from Canisius. The best season of any transfer to a high major program in all of college basketball. Tillman wanted it inside. Tips it in. He is a monster. I mean, he had three guys swarming him and used that big body to go over the top and then was relentless following it up. Barford cutting. Too strong. Rebound inside. Rejected as Thompson was fighting for it. Cleared by the Missouri Tigers. Extra pass to Robertson. Robertson. 
Jones hesitated and threw it out of bounds. First lead of the game for the Missouri Tigers halfway through the first half. It's amazing. Cassius Robertson's threes are almost worth four or five, especially at home. You know, the, the, his teammates believe this crowd. He is so beloved for a guy who's only been here as a graduate transfer. And I think it's his story. I mean, it starts with his effort. He plays so hard and has had to work so hard to get here. He had no D1 offers out of high school, went to Canisius 160 pounds, redshirted his first year, rebuilt his shot, and here he is. He should be SEC all first team. Tillman rejected inside by Gafford, but instead it's a three for Barnett. Gafford quickly the other end, gets no call. Barnett with the rebound. Perrier got a little too aggressive, turned over again. Arthur. Ooh, what a move by the senior. You know, those two guards, Barford and Macon, their twos come in transition. They are really three-point heavy when it's against half-court defense, but they are so good when they get downhill in transition. You see the creativity there for Barford. For an 0-5 start, Missouri's hit eight of their last 13 shots. with the rebound can't clear it Gafford with an extra effort well that's a silencer right there and I'll tell you the big fella I don't know how long he's gonna wear an Arkansas uniform because his last two weeks he has gone to another level he's at a legit 6'11 I think he's gotten bigger this season ability to finish a good shot blocker I was wondering if you were going to bring the tape measure out of shoot around today. Hey, I'm telling you, he's he has grown. Sometimes they list you 6'11, you're really 6'9 and a half, 6'10. But he is a legit 6'11. Yeah, with all the talk of the seven seniors that Arkansas has, Daniel Gafford, the true freshman, has turned himself into a bona fide pro prospect, as you're saying, from El Dorado, Arkansas. A standing game the other night against Auburn. Well, think of who he had to replace. You know, a guy who had a fantastic career at that position in Moses Kingsley and who really was an impact defensively. I mean, that, that was the position that if it came along at a good pace, Arkansas had a chance to be really good and they are playing their best basketball of the season. Making from near 30 feet. Senior night lead the Razorbacks by four. Hello. Hi. How's it going? All right. How you doing? Welcome. So this is the all-new Chevy Traverse. What do you think? This looks better than 99% of the SUVs out there. It's very modern, sleek. Maybe the most impressive part of the all-new Traverse is what's on the inside. <gasps> Here. Oh, I've missed you guys. I haven't seen you guys in so long. What's happening? We flew her out. It's a family car. We had to put your family in it. Yeah, it gets seven thumbs up. All these people saying, oh, I'm tired of looking at a bar. Why does he keep getting on there? Why does he keep getting on there? But you can't take your eyes off me. No days off, guys. All right. I think we're going on a trip. To China? Do you believe in second chances? Here is the new beginning. Knocked out the shot clock. Are you serious? The Camp Reef presented by Prism on ESPN. 
Welcome to Saturday Showcase, presented by Five Hour Energy with Chris Patola and Taylor Zarser here in Mizzou Arena today, where the Tigers lead Arkansas 22-18 with 7.58 to go in the first half. Part of championship week is the SEC tournament in St. Louis for the first time ever. Chris Patola, there was a time 10, 15 years ago, if I would have told you that, you would have said I had three heads. <laughs> Well, it's a big game for Arkansas. I mean, they, you know, this is for a bye to the quarters. And, you know, you realize how important it is when the last team to win the SEC tournament without a bye to the quarters is Georgia in 2008. So this is an important game for Arkansas. Robertson off the mark there, making flying down the floor. Adrio Bailey with the finish. They can run now. I mean, and those big guys run because they know those guards are going to feed them. Bailey, one of the few sophomores on this team with C.J. Jones, who already has a four-point play in the game. And there's Jonte Porter with the left hand again. Porter and Perrier, you have got to get them off that left hand. They are so dominant going left. This is Arkansas in transition again. Downhill, a nice little look away. Makes it look like he's going to Beard on the left. And when you run the floor like Bailey does there, they're going to get you the basketball. They, they are so efficient in transition. Again, a lot of their two-point baskets come in the open floor. They're much more of a three-point shooting team in the half court. Off Ooh. balance, but what a move. I don't even know if he saw the basket. <laughs> Flying to his right, got it back to his left hand and delivered. Sometimes the forgotten senior on this team from North Little Rock. Barnett, too strong. And they'll call a push-off. Tonight at 8.15 Eastern on ESPN, it's part two of college basketball's greatest rivalry, and it's the Sonic Blockbuster as number nine, North Carolina, takes on number five, Duke. It's also available on the ESPN app. Chris Spatola knows all about that as a former assistant coach at Duke. I want to know how many suits you went through sweating in the gym <laughs> at Cameron. Well, I don't sweat quite like... Uh Buzz Williams does, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you go go through quite a bit, especially those games at Cameron. What a great celebration of college basketball, as Mike Krzyzewski calls it. Coming up in just a little bit, Tillman no good. Tiffin will not go somehow. That was everywhere but in. Macon with a strong move. And just a nice little quick cross to that right hand. What a finish, man. Macon and Barford wired to score. Both went over 1,000 career points against Auburn on Tuesday in just two seasons playing for the Hawks. Jonte Porter should be a senior in high school. That was a pro move there, but he couldn't finish. Arkansas retains possession with eight on the shot clock. Hall for three. Razorback struggling so far beyond the arc and haven't been able to get really any clean looks. Oh, it's all. Porter. You know, they set up the high-low, and, and Tillman did have the defender on his back. Porter missed him, but he sure makes up for it. Look at this. I mean, that is advanced offense right there by a guy coming off a monster game against Vanderbilt. Got to go back to 1998-99. To Keon Doolin, his freshman season, to see a stack line like John Tate Porter had the other night against Vanderbilt. What a talent. Played his senior season in Seattle. He is from Columbia. 
Won a state championship here with his big brother, Michael, a couple of years ago. Here comes flying in, but loses control, and it's turned over. Here come the Tigers the other way. Just pass. How about Geis? Gets it back, misses the three, and then a foul inside. The glass is one of those areas coming in that Arkansas was going to have to fight their way through. Their guards were going to have to be involved, especially when those bigs come over to block shots. Those guards got to come in on the back side and be rebounders. And Missouri, one of the better rebounding teams in this conference. Robertson coming back in as per year at the line, one of many that hails here from the Show Me State. He's from Blue Springs, the only three-year player in the program with Cullen Van Leer. Everyone else has been here two years or less. and goes to the line. Just good offense, good read by Thompson. Oh, it's nice when you have a big guy who can pass it, or first of all, a big guy who's willing to pass it, but then a big guy who is capable of doing it, and then a nice, you, you had that isolated wing on the left there, a nice backdoor cut on the overplay by Macon. 85% free throw shooter. Tonight at 10.15 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Saturday Showcase presented by 5-Hour Energy continues with UCLA and USC. Both on the tourney bubble, the Trojans and the Bruins. Oh. Trying to play for a first-round bye in the Pac-12 tournament in Vegas. Seems like the whole Pac-12 is on Lenardi's bubble. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, uh, a chaotic year in the Pac-12. We'll leave it at that. They're not doubling the post. You got to get those guard, guards to dig in. Just got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. And head and shoulders. Shoulders were made for greatness, not dandruff. Your father always said he wanted you to be a pilot. I'm not a hero like he was. The kaiju. You're back. This is your chance to make things right. It doesn't matter where you came from. This is our time to make a difference. What do we do? We fight! Rated PG-13. of those chairs in Bristol. Th that's how good a teammate Dallin is because Lafonso's the one who wants to talk Notre Dame. Right. But Dallin took it off his hands so that Fonz didn't have to go there. You see that? I did see that, but I'm going to ask you to talk Notre Dame. <laughs> if so, you're in Indianapolis, are you evaluating the Irish with Bonzi Colson or without? See, now that I know that Fonz is in the studio, he's a lot bigger than I am. You're just going to tease it and I'm say, say You know what? I, and I said this to you before this game here today. Him playing well actually helps their narrative because now it, it you know, look, losing the, the number one team in the country on the road is, is nothing to sneeze at. And uh, he played great. He's certainly a difference maker. I, I think they are a tournament team. Jonte Porter's been playing terrific basketball. He's got eight points. His big brother Michael not playing, says there is a chance you might see him in St. Louis next Thursday or Friday. Played since November the 10th. Two minutes, two points, two rebounds. A big injury. He's making the shot is rejected inside. Wow. Look inside the Tillman. 
I'll tell you what, these big guys can really pass the ball. Especially Porter and Perrier. Look at this pass. I mean, he is in no man's land. That's a turnover. The help comes down late. And if you're Tillman, you got to go up and dunk that. That's an assist. Freshman from East St. Louis, Illinois, did not know Conzo Martin prior to arriving in Como, even though both are from the same city. Conzo, after getting the job, was introduced to Tillman, and Tillman decommitted from the Illini and felt a connection with Martin and decided to suit up for the Tigers. And he's their muscle. He, he's their toughness. And, and their defense looks a lot different when he's not on the floor. He's got two catcher's mitts for hands. I mean, it just really... I'm telling you, 15 minutes in a body like that. Just let me walk down the beach with a body <laughs> like that, that all the time. for 15 minutes. That's it. That's all Reach. I'm asking. Eight points for Tillman in that big body. Speaking of big bodies, Trey Thompson can pass. Extra one to Barford. Ooh. Finally hits a three. Jalen second leading scorer in the SEC behind Georgia's Yante Maiden. Standing two years after transferring from Motlow State Community College. Porter, another good look, and there's that dunk you asked for. And the doubles come in, the backside's got to rotate. And that's two straight possessions where the backside is late. And nice post passing once again. Robertson. Feeling it up eight. We thought our parents ended the war. But now, it's our turn to fight. They've evolved. And they could wipe out all life. Well, he's pretty big. Ready for this? Everything you got. We get PG thirteen. Mizzou doing it on both ends here in the first half. They are. You know, this is that post pass, and the, the help rotates late. Daryl Macon is just late. Tillman all by himself underneath the basket. And here's that three. And when this guy he hunts that shot transition, has been guarded well so far in the half court. But what, in that uh, unsettled situation, does a nice job finding space. Robertson hit 98 threes for Kinesis last year. He has 98 this year for Mizzou. Barford, a three-point machine, too strong this time. It's amazing to make that transition from a mid-major conference and to play even better basketball in the SEC. Another spin move. A lot of stuff with Jonte Porter you can't teach. Just a really good feel on both ends. All the talk about Michael Porter Jr., of course, his father, Michael Porter Sr., is one of the assistant coaches on this staff, and it is a family affair in Como. His brother watching and he he went through a couple of different warm-ups today full participant in shoot around practice at length shooting before the game today in hopes of playing next week beard moves too strong another rebound for Tillman well, Arkansas has gotten some nice looks at the basket I think they're expecting contact and, and haven't gotten calls oh. 
there you see Mrs. Porter, who was such an outstanding player at Iowa. Lisa has two daughters that play on the women's basketball team. As you see, Bree and Sierra lost yesterday in the SEC tournament. Their aunt, of course, Robin, is the women's basketball coach. The Porter slash Pinchton family is in control in Como. <laughs> So you're saying don't get into a five-on-five -five family dispute. <laughs> well, there they are. Settle it on the, on the basketball court. There's a lot of Porters uh, sitting there taking in the game today. And I understand some of those little brothers are going to be big-time college prospects as well. another 25 seconds of defense you know they want to play fast does Arkansas and that's a shot Barford can hit but they needed a bucket they, they got to finish this half with some momentum into Tillman again and he goes to the free throw line that's the problem with a quick shot on the other end you don't get it then you come down the other end, and Mizzou sucks the air out of the ball, and they're getting everything at their basket, and what they're not finishing, they're following up with offensive boards. Have eight offensive rebounds in this half. Fifth free throw for Tillman is good. He's got 11 points. Tonight at 8.15 Eastern on ESPN, part two of college basketball's greatest rivalry, and it's a sonic blockbuster as number nine North Carolina takes on number five Duke. It's also available on the ESPN app. One. I never imagined both of those teams would find themselves in the top 10, Chris, maybe two months ago. Duke was on, not North Carolina, but here they are again. As Tillman gets a huge hand from the home faithful. Largest lead for Mizzou, it's 10. This is how Mike Anderson slows his team down. They run a little bit of that weave as false motion, get the defense shifting, and then they offer this ball screen, allow Macon to go to work. Porter comes out and pumps him with five on the shot clock. You know, some coaches will say we want three, four passes. Mike Anderson runs that weave. And then it, it finishes with Macon at the top there, and they get that high ball screen, and he's so good. So good at drawing contact. Arkansas has not scored in over three minutes. One of the best free throw shooters in the country changes that. Lincoln, the senior from Little Rock shooting over 85%. It's best in the Southeastern Conference. You see Furrier take a seat and Tillman come back in for the last 12 seconds. Geist will make a move at the horn. Will take an eight-point lead to the half. There's nine and zero at home when leading at the half this year. 39-31, Mizzou. Up next, we send you to the studio. Back to Saturday Showcase, presented by Five Hour Energy. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. With Chris Patola, I'm Taylor Zarzer here at Mizzou Arena where the Tigers have the halftime lead. And Chris, it's been all about the Mizzou big men in the first half. It is. Shows how much I know. We promoted the guards <laughs> uh, at the top of this game. But uh, no, these two freshman bigs from Missouri have been the difference. They have been monsters inside. And they're really playing off of each other really, really well. Here's Jante Porter on that block. He loves that left hand. Here's Tillman inside, and then he follows it up. They have been relentless 
on the offensive glass. Eight offensive rebounds for Missouri in that first half. 20 combined points from Tillman and Porter. 10 to 2 second chance points. Missouri over Arkansas. It's been up front in that first half, Taylor. See Mike Anderson coaching his Hogs down to eight at the half. If they come back and win this game, they get a double bye into Friday's quarterfinals in St. Louis for the SEC tournament with a loss. Like Missouri, they will be playing on Thursday. And just to finish your thought, Chris, Tillman has been outstanding. He only had four points against Arkansas in the last meeting in January 12th in the first half tonight. Well, Arkansas has struggled defensively all year. I mean, they're one of only seven power conference teams allowing uh, the amount of points per game they are. So and part of it's their pace, but part of it is they just have really leaned in offensively and have struggled at times defensively. Need Barford to get going. It's his second three there to cut the deficit to five. Year. Oh. Extra pass to Tillman in one. I mean, this is big to big. You know, it, it's big to big passing, rotation to late, and that's on the guards. I mean, the bigs are coming over. There's Gafford coming over to block a shot. The backside has been one, two, three steps late all night so far. 15 points for the freshman from East St. Louis. That's a new career high for Jeremiah Tillman. Thomas. Inside the three-point line, and they're going to call a push on Perrier. Uh, not a great shot from Thomas, and I mean that is a foul. It, you know, it may be incidental, but that's he does foul him from behind. Senior night in Como today, honoring three different seniors, all that transferred in from other schools, including Cassius Robertson. Weird, somehow among the trees got it out. Arthur, way too strong. High up in the corner is Van Leer right in front of his bench. Missouri will retain possession. Porter had Daryl Macon on him was calling for the ball and that the double team is actually what prevented Van Leer from throwing it inside. Four turnovers for the Tigers today, averaging over 14 on the season. Big issue for this team really playing without a true point guard. This guy's been their top scorer and he gets stripped away. Ball gets stripped away and it, they say off the arm. And he's really their one creator. That's why the big's passing has been so good for Missouri, because really they don't have that one guy who can off the bounce create a shot for other guys. Over again, Razorbacks run, Beer finishes. That's one area where Missouri taking care of the basketball, especially against Arkansas, is so important. They'll kill you if you turn to get those live ball turnovers. Robertson again. They are in transition, Ooh. finishing with Gaffer. Timeout, Mizzou. Daniel Gafford at 65 dunks coming into the game. More than six SEC teams owns the rim again. Razorbacks back in it. Your father always said he wanted you to be a pilot. I'm not a hero like he was. The kaiju. I'm back. Did 
this is your chance to make things right. It doesn't matter where you came from. This is our time to make a difference. What do we do? We fight! We did PG-13. Wait, David. Can y'all please cheese real quick? I'm gonna miss you guys. Can y'all can y'all cheese real quick? Thank you. I love you guys, Bob, especially you. Hey, Bob. Love hey, you guys. Bob. Oh, get in here. Get in here. Everybody. Right, you in. too. Look at my media. I love y'all. Love y'all. There we go. Oh, whoa. Oh. You took your glasses off. Wait, Bob, sit. <laughs> Ready? I love that. Jalen Barford and Daryl Macon saying, can y'all cheese, please? And he's referring to Bob Holt, the legendary writer for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, who's in that picture. Sit back down, Bob. Got to get another picture in here. That's after their last game at home on Tuesday night in a victory over Auburn. You never see that. Giving some media love, Barford and Macon. Well, for two junior college kids, they have really endeared themselves to that school, that community, of course, making from Little Rock. He said, I was talking to him last season. He said, Little Rock kids dream of playing at Arkansas. I love being here. Jordan Barnett from St. Louis dreamed of playing for Missouri and hit that three. And Gafford gets fouled down at the other end. It really is remarkable. I mean, you, know, you look at Barford and Macon for Arkansas and, and how much the community loves those two guys. And, and Cassius Robertson the same at, at Missouri. Just in, in the one season, a graduate transfer. They have embraced the Canadian. Yes, they have. Macon. Dante Porter. Another rebound after a terrific first half. His big brother Michael not playing today, announcing this morning that he might give it a go in St. Louis in the SEC tournament. That back surgery in November. And you do wonder at some point, Chris, you said this Tuesday night after watching him look great in practice, if he's not going to play Tuesday, if he's not going to play today, then when? And why? Well, I walked in this morning and he's got a fresh haircut. I mean, that is usually the first sign that a guy's <laughs> ready to play, the, the, the fresh cut. Great week and another finish for Missouri. We'll call timeout. And at this point, as we're saying, Chris, you, you do wonder about Michael Porter, who is a top pro prospect. Everyone feels he'll be one of the first two or three players selected. And you, you hear all the talk of the risk associated with coming back after surgery on your L3 and L4 discs. Well, Missouri fans aren't going to like this, but, but he has far more to lose by coming back than he does by not playing again uh, or at all. And, you know, I, I shared this story on Tuesday night when I was on Duke staff in 2011. Kyrie Irving got hurt eight games into that season. The reason he, he came back for the NCAA tournament is he just wanted to play in the NCAA tournament. He, he, he knew he was going to be a one and done. He loved uh, being a part of that group. He loved his eight games and he wanted to play in the NCAA tournament. It was his dream. Um, you, know, I, you can't climb into mind, inside the mind of Michael Porter. It seems like he wants to play. Uh, but until he is fully healthy, uh, again, a guy who's got far more to lose by playing than he does to game. Not the way Jonte Porter runs the court. Tie-up, though, caused by Arkansas. The possession arrow favors the Razorbacks. Hawks down five and have been trailing basically the entire game. Aikens, Tom, how about the extra one to Gafford? Selfishness of both teams from the big men so far today. And we have a whistle away from the ball. Missouri up three on senior night. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the United Explorer Card and Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. MLS is back. It's time for our 
Osaka today on ESPN and FS1. Blue collide in a Sonic Blockbuster rematch. UNC Duke, the rematch tonight at 8.15 on ESPN. Well, Chris Patola told us just a moment ago about coaching Kyrie Irving at Duke. Look at that guy at the end of the bench six years ago. So sad, so uptight early in the game. Carolina's winning. Oh, the jubilation. Austin Rivers for three. And there's the reaction from Collins, K, and Spatola. Oh, there must have been a bad uh, call involved there. Tyler Hansbro just got away with something back in you know 2009. What? You know what that is? That is, uh, w- once again... Tyler Hansbro, <laughs> who played like a bull in a China shop, but, uh, China shop got more calls. So that must have been another Hansbro phantom foul call is what that was. You're just sh- certain of it, too, <laughs> without even seeing the video. John St. Porter using the left hand again, and Thomas answers at the other end. Just a three-point game for the Missouri Tigers. Joe Lenardi right now has them... As a nine seed, Chris, you say that they need one more win, whether it's today or next week in St. Louis. Oh, skip pass, Geist did. It's out of bounds. Back to the Razorbacks. Hogs are hot. Six of nine from the floor this half. They are, and it's fed their defense. You know, their offense feeds their defense. And, and just a bad decision there on that pass. And that looked, looked like a good call to me. But that's where, you know, the, look, sometimes I was the same way. I mean, you, you start, the ball starts going in on one end, and all of a sudden you become a, a defensive stopper on the other. And I think that's how Arkansas has been at times. Terrific guard for Army, speaking of rivalries. It's another great one, Army Navy, that you played in, coached in Duke, Carolina, so you've seen it from all sides. Thomas just inside the three point line. Porter clears it again. Robertson off the mark as Missouri isn't able to get into their offense this time. Tonight at 1015 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app Saturday showcase presented by Five Hour Energy continues with the Bruins and the Trojans battle for Los Angeles both on the tournament bubble. Trojans have won four straight. Bruins did win the first matchup back a month ago. Trojans looking for a first round bye in the Vegas Pac-12 tournament next week. Constantly updated Missouri trying to stay out of that conversation. Jones for the tie way short. Injury there in front of the Arkansas bench. That is Cullen Van Leer. Van Leer, the junior from Pacific, Missouri. We mentioned he's one of two three-year players for the Tigers. He landed there on his right leg. Well, and he gets kicked in the back of the leg on the shot. And so I don't know if it was a Charlie horse, but on the shot as he's closing out and then turns to block out, he does get kicked in the back of the leg. Missouri's had so much adversity this year. Had to kick Terrence Phillips out of the program. Blake Harris, C.J. Roberts transferred. Adam Wolf injured his leg. Two, two guys sitting out due to a red shirt. And Missouri really is only about 7-8 deep. And without him on the court, that's a big loss given that Conzo Martin's asking them to play such pressure defense The six or seven guys. Well, and he trusts them. He's not a guy who's going to look. He doesn't do one thing great, does a lot of things pretty well, and, and more, most importantly, Conzo Martin trusts him out there, especially defensively. So after the injury, Geist comes back in, Jordan Geist, who does play more minutes than Van Leer. Junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, but has 
loved his role as the sixth man for Mizzou this season. Arkansas brings pressure. And this is where it, you force Cassius Robinson to, to bring it up against pressure again. Best offensive player for Missouri, having to handle the ball full court. Only 10 on the shot clock, and the Tigers yet to really establish their offense. Pushing foul. It goes on Cook. <laughs> like Anderson saying, why are you playing with your hands? What's he going to do with it out there? And you, you basically bail out. You said it, Taylor. But a really good defensive possession. You bail Missouri out of it by putting your hands on it. First half, Tillman had, and another pushing foul, this time on Trey Thompson. Tell you what, that's a lot of heat under there with Tillman and Thompson. You better bring a pork chop because those two dudes are carrying a load. Pork chops are great. I got to tell you, the barbecue we had here at Missouri Arena is something that. Look at this. I mean, that is a heavyweight match. <laughs> and that is a foul. I mean, you can't put your hands on that. that they changed that rule last year. Three fouls on Arkansas, this time down the court, two on Thompson. So it sends Barnett to the free throw line, who's been outstanding, 88% on the season. A Texas transfer who's from St. Louis. And how about the night he had here when he helped his high school team win a state championship game? 43 points, 20 rebounds in this building. Well, and he's been a defensive stopper, too. You know, a guy who can shoot it, but did a nice job the other night against Jeff Roberson of Vanderbilt. He's got good length on that defensive side of the ball. And he's been on Barford for most of the night. with four on the shot clock. And Tillman, who was on him, mismatched, turns around and says, what do you want me to do with that? Two-point game. 13 minutes to go. Jones that's slow to get up after the foul on that per your truth. I think he banged his knee when he fell, uh, which does not feel good. Uh, these Missouri bigs have done a nice job playing out of double teams tonight. I mean, this is just a great reaction, a nice cut by per year, and once again, I mean, his knee buckles and then he bangs it on the floor. But once again, C.J. Jones late on the help from the backside. So Mizzou doing a nice job when that double comes to the block getting cutters from the backside and exposing that late rotation. I feel like that's somewhat of a lost art, Chris, is the big big men having that ability to pass inside. And as you've said, both of these teams are terrific at it. Well, big guys passing in general is uh, typically, I've had issues with that. <laughs> now, you know, look, I'm not slandering big guys on national television, but uh, it's a daily battle, Taylor. But when they are willing to pass, it helps when they can do it. And in the case of Tillman, a guy in the last two games, he's had seven turnovers. And part of it is Kentucky doubled him. Uh, Vanderbilt, they always double the post. Uh, and it bothered him. He has been much better tonight. C.J. Jones, a sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama. Four points tonight. As the Razorbacks are about nine or ten deep off their bench. Of course, a team that lost in the round of 32 to the eventual national champions, North Carolina, had that game on their racket, too. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. People forget. I mean, this team's got some DNA left over from that group last year who, who had the national champs on the ropes. 
They've got seven seniors, and they are playing their best basketball. Anderson says this team is looking for as much leadership as that one had, but they're better on offense, and they're deeper than they were in 2017. Joe Lenardi right now has them as a seven seed, need to win this game to get the double bye in next week's SEC tournament. year an 81 percent free throw shooter gives Mizzou a four-point lead Barford again Stay with the Razorbacks here. Barford's confidence level never lacking. No matter what's happening in the game, this guy, as you said, even when it, there's a terrific possession, defensive play made by Mizzou, he's right there to rise up. And this time, it's Thompson again. And now a steal for Arkansas. And Beard with the finish. Tie game. where when you don't have a point guard it's 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 tough you're trying to inbound Cassius Robinson to Jordan Barnett a nice play by Barford I mean he just gets right to the spot to cut it off Zoo just had four turnovers in the first half they have five already in, Arkansas, in the first eight minutes of the second Arkansas is not pressing against steals they're just oh, oh. pressing to force these guards to handle oh. He has been a monster tonight. I mean, we're going to give you a replay on a miss. Look at this. That's how you attack the basket, big fella. Twelve points now for Jeremiah Tillman. Excuse me, make that 16 points for uh, Tillman here. What a night he's had. Now 17 on the night. Outstanding performance for the freshman. Another good look inside under the basket. But all gets too far under the rim. Moments are counted in more than strokes, and the memories surround us like the wind. Amen corner, and for all who enter, say a prayer at the Masters. Champ Week, you know what you're going to get. The full range of hoops glory, guaranteed. Champ Week continues next weekend on ESPN. So this is what it would look like if the SEC basketball tournament started today. You would have Arkansas with a double bye into the quarterfinals on Friday. Missouri would be a six seed. Florida clobbered Kentucky earlier today. So the Cats are going to have to play on Thursday in St. Louis. Now the Razorbacks lose this game. They fall out of that position and into the second round on Thursday. So the double bye is a big deal.
It is. Yeah, I said it in the first half. Georgia is the last team in 2008 to win the SEC tournament who did not have the double bye. And they did that in two different arenas. There you go. So, I mean, it is, if you're playing to win, certainly uh, that double bye is significant. It's the year the terrible storm went through the Georgia Dome and to finish on Georgia Tech's campus. All sorts of unique circumstances a decade ago. Geist for three. Another rebound for Tillman. A better look. Still won't go down, but another rebound and a foul as Barnett took one to the eye. Well, it's now 10 offensive rebounds for Missouri. Defensive rebounding, an area where Arkansas has struggled throughout the year. with a huge advantage on the offensive glass so far today. Six more than the Razorbacks. And this guy has been a big reason why. Nine rebounds, 16 points for the freshman. That's how you do a senior day. range a great passer for a big man and steps out from 18 feet and he loves that top of the key shot that 17 foot top of the key is right where he likes it he's fouled 90 feet from the basket and go to the free throw line you know, Arkansas hasn't pressed as much this year as they have in the past. I mean, it's a program known for the 40 minutes of hell, and that's kind of what their reputation has been. Mike Anderson telling us this is not that kind of a team. It's much more of an offensive team. But they have utilized it today to try to get the tempo to where they want it. One and one for Geist, knocking down the first one. Colin Van Leer had to go to the locker room with a significant injury to his left leg. Geist has come in off the bench all season and given Conzo Martin a bunch of minutes playing over 20 minutes a game in conference play. Missouri halfway through this second frame as the Tigers have the seven-point lead. Just eight wins overall in 2017, looking for their 10th win in conference today. The crowd doesn't like it. These are fouls, though. I mean, you, you can't put your hand on the ball handler like that. And, and in that case, Macon doing a nice job ripping through and forcing a foul call. Beard cutting. Wow. Don't see many shots playing off the board like that from eight feet. Part of this three right here might be Conzo Martin's reaction on the bench. Tell you what, in the words of the great philosopher Biggie Smalls, if you didn't know Jeremiah Tillman and Jonte Porter, 
now you know this has been an outstanding game for both. And if there's anything you remember from this broadcast, I hope it's what you just said. <laughs> you can learn a lot from Biggie. Hey, bless this uh, Over and back. Call as all three officials, Tony Green, Tony Anderson, and Bart Lennox get together. Trying to claw back now down 10. Barford with the ball. Thompson just inside the three-point line. And, and they're doing a nice job. These guards are getting into the paint. They're drawing the help. And that's where these shots from Thompson. It's so nice to have a big who can shoot it from that range. Put so much pressure on the help. Under 10 on the shot clock for Barnett. Tries the pass into Tillman, and he throws it away. Here's what I'm talking about, Taylor. This is where the guard gets in the lane, and he forces the help from Jonte Porter, who gets caught behind. And that's where Thompson is finding that nice 17-foot shot. And he's capable of knocking it down. Big reason why the Razorbacks have 10 conference wins. This time it's a travel on Macon as he creates that penetration. You like to see him just get to his spot, rise up and shoot it. Such a good athlete. You, you don't have to mess around with it in there. Take your shot. Eight points today for the seniors, averaging just over 17 this season. Porter again. Harford and Macon, just 19 points combined in this game with just over seven minutes to go. For the push off, his Razorbacks are down eight. Mais c'est quoi ça? Mais ce n'est pas classique. Ah, ah, ce n'est pas une photo de la modèle. C'est une chose. This is what our version of financial planning looks like. Tomorrow's important. But this officially completes his education. Spend your life living. Find an advisor at NorthwesternMutual.com. Who's a new guy? They call him the Whisperer. Watch this. Hey, Watson, what's Avionics telling you? Maintenance records and performance data suggest replacing capacitor C4. What's with the coffee maker? We are not on speaking terms. Carolina tonight. I think Duke wins at home. I think they avenge it, and that thing has been 50-50 the whole way. I would expect this season would be no different. Carolina with an outstanding second half to win the first meeting in Chapel Hill a few weeks ago. John talked about that Tennessee-Georgia game going down to the wire. Arkham Auburn will be the one seed. They have the tiebreaker. They beat Tennessee in Knoxville earlier this season, but how surprising the top of the conference has been in 2018. Well, we showed the bracket earlier. It was seen Kentucky as a five seed it is a little bit unusual. Yeah, I think that Tennessee team is, is, is really good. It's going to come down to their guards, how well they play. And Auburn's had a great year, but missing Anthony, Anthony McLemore is, is going to be significant going forward. He's their rim protector. Yeah. A 
Cowboys had trouble trying to get it into Gafford in the second half. Can't do it on this possession. Turn it over. Robertson in transition. Another offensive rebound. As Missouri's had so many second chances at this end of the court. Martin says run that shot clock down inside 10. It's at four. And Porter connects. This the largest lead for Mizzou today, a dozen. Thompson likes that spot. Tell you what, this, this game has flipped. I mean, it's like Bizarro Day. We've got bigs out here firing away from the perimeter. These guards can't hit a shot. Unbelievable. You took way too much responsibility for saying that it was on you that we were talking about the three great shooting guards coming into the game. I was right at your hip on that decision going into the game. <laughs> We've seen the big men step out and fire today. Robertson Ooh. drives, and what a block at the rim. Gafford on the other end. Watch how patient Jonte Porter is waiting for this ball, and that's just too much. Nice jab step. He looks so comfortable, and look at that. Big brother loves it. Loves it. Got a fresh cut. All for his little bro who is having... His second consecutive big-time game. Yeah, he might be the SEC player of the week with these performances. That was Arkansas's first free-throw attempt in the second half that Gafford just connected on. I mean, that was a high-level shot that, that Porter took. I mean, the jab step throws Gafford and then the raise up and knock it down. He's got a beautiful release. Oh, Mike Anderson would say... Be quiet if you start talking about Daniel Gafford's pro potential. Maybe Conzo Martin doesn't want us to talk about Jonte uh -oh. Porter. They're both pros now. <laughs> They're both pros. Hey, Gafford is, is, I mean, there are 13 scouts here today. Now, I'm sure some of them expected maybe Porter, Michael Porter would play, but they're here to see other guys too. Jonte Porter has 17 points today at 24 against Vandy on Tuesday night. Robertson's been quiet. No points in the second half. To cut it to five. Parker just three of eight from deep. Uh, we've said it all night. Arkansas, with Bacon and Barford, they're the two best three-point shooters in the SEC. It's been a huge part of their offense this season. Robertson shot blocked by Gafford. Barford in transition, lets the big man finish. Tried to tear the rim off. This guy owns both rims in each game he plays in. And that was not a good shot on the other end by Robertson. Porter had a guy on his back. you got to throw it into him. That's Porter's spot. He gives it up and draws the foul. you got to leave these rims alone, big fella. we got a lot of game left here. Here he comes into your living room. Take that with emphasis. Energy shots. Get back to 100%. And in part by the magic of Walt Disney World Resort Hotels. And eBay. Fill your cart with color. I'm just worried about the house. And taking care of the boys. Zach! 
talk to me. It's for the house. I got a job. <laughs> it's okay. Dad took care of us. Principal, we can help you plan for that. A championship week, of course, next week, but bids extended this weekend. Ohio Valley, Missouri Valley, Big South all passing out bids, and the Big Ten championship game is tomorrow. Yes, it is. Michigan State will not be in it. How about the job Michigan's done? They are tough. Mo Wagner's become an absolute star. Abdul Rahman's become a star. They, they are playing unbelievable. It's really been the last month of the season. Wolverines knocking out Sparty today in Madison Square Garden. Meanwhile, Missouri has a six-point advantage over Arkansas. Joe Lenardi has both of these teams in the NCAA tournament. As Mizzou is a nine and Arkansas as a seven. Two of the eight teams that Joe Lenardi has representing the Southeastern Conference in the NCAA tournament. That includes Alabama. Still has them in there. It's one of the last teams in after another loss today. They lost five straight, losing at the Aggies. Looks for Gafford inside, and he draws the foul. Tonight after UCLA, USC, stick around for SportsCenter with Bucci and John Anderson. Will Houston extend their win streak to 15 games? Plus, Jay Billis breaks down Carolina and Duke in a full recap of how the top quarterbacks perform at the NFL Combine. SportsCenter, 12.15 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Mizzou is 14 of 15, shooting free throws this half. Arkansas has only attempted two of them. Score for Arkansas today. Daniel Gafford misses both. He's been a rim rocker and a rim blocker. Macon has been relentless guarding the ball tonight. over Tillman. So Martin has his team take it inside 10 seconds each time down the court. Offensive foul. The crowd doesn't like it, but that was an offensive foul. And that's four on Tillman. I mean, you can't just pull through a guy. He's, he's got legal guarding position there. And did he sell it a little bit? Perhaps. But you, you can't go straight through the chest. to the bench. With just under three minutes to go. Razorbacks down eight. Macon wow. somehow made a move to the basket. And he had to work for it because Barnett was all over him. I thought Barnett fouled him twice on the way to the basket, but they could play it through contact. What a finish. Two possession game as Geis beats the defense. This 
is Robertson again for three, and he draws the foul. Here's that shot by Macon on the last possession. I thought that was a foul. I thought that was a foul. And he still fights through, plays through the contact. And a nice finish. But again, Jordan Barnett's done a great job tonight. I mean, he's, he's knocked down shots at the other end. But you go back to last week, he had the task of Jeff Roberson. Tonight he's been on Barford and Macon. And it's really made life difficult for both of those guys. Played all 40 minutes in that game in Nashville. Yeah. And what a silly foul. Nothing kills a run in momentum more than fouling a three-point shooter. First points of the half for Robertson. Fourth different Mizzou player in double figures. He now has 11. The lead is eight. Tough shot as Barnett plays great defense I again. Mean, that was that was outstanding defense. is a two-way player. Watch this defensive possession. I mean, that is just, and that cuts off where he actually has to slide his feet. And then here it is on the other end, a great pass from Jonte Porter, great vision, and Barnett steps into it. What a senior day for him. Five for seven from three, playing in his final game in Mizzou Arena. We mentioned the remarkable game that he had here as a senior in high school four years ago and won the state championship, went to Texas, transferred into his home state program and is having a game to remember tonight. Still no foul. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. I mean, I guess, you know, Missouri does a nice job putting it in the hands of guys who can make free throws, but at some point, enough trying to force a turnover, you got to stop the clock. Sends the graduate from Toronto, the Canisius transfer, who leads the SEC in minutes played with over 38 a game in conference play to the line. He misses the first. How about the job that Conzo Martin has done with this team? You said this squarely puts them in get ready for the tournament 20 Absolutely. wins after just 27 in the last three years yeah. it's it's remarkable lockdown defense by per year when he does bump Macon will go to the line and Arkansas Squarely in the tournament as well. We'll fall to 21 and 10, barring a miracle comeback. But they're going to have to play Thursday in St. Louis. Yeah, we'll see. In the case of Missouri, we'll see what happens with uh, Cullen Van Leer. And that will be an interesting moving forward. You said, as you said, when he went down, a team that doesn't have a lot of depth to begin with, you, you take out a starting guard. Play seven or eight guys in their rotation. Continue to be speculation about that man at the end of the bench, Michael Porter Jr., and whether he plays in St. Louis or not. And as you said, you can completely understand the decision not to play given the risk associated after that, that micro dissectomy surgery that he had in November. But from a manpower standpoint, I know Gonzo Martin would love to have him. Well, and, and, you know, to follow up the point on Conzo Martin, I mean, think about it. Like, you you lose two minutes into the season, the guy who was projected to be the number one pick in the draft. 
And, and what he did is he's a he's got a team that has fought for him. I mean, these guys and, and you know we've talked to Conzo Martin this morning, talked to him on Tuesday. The first thing he says is how much this team has fought for him. But he also has built them around a defensive identity. Low possession, grind it out, play some defense, and they got a great year out of that guy, Cassius Robinson. The battle for the OVC is coming up next. Belmont and Murray State, just 20 seconds away. A rejection from Jonte. And Gonzo Martin's going to call a timeout here. Well, he was thinking about it to try to get his last senior in the game and decides not to. Missouri runs away with a 10-point win against the Razorbacks on senior night. on Belmont for the Ohio Valley Conference Men's Championship, part of Championship Week, presented by Principal. As we send you